Hello again everyone and welcome back to another Boosted Films video. First I'll start by saying we bought this dash cam and uh, this dash cam hardware kit from spytechinc.com. What we have here is the A118Z dash cam and the hardware kit that I purchased um, as well. So a nice thing about this dash cam is it is a capacitor powered design, not a battery. So what the capacitor does is basically it'll keep a little bit of power going to this dash cam so it can keep the date and time. So basically when you wire this up and when you hook this up with the hard hardware kit, you're hooking up the power source to an ignition wire where it will only come on when the car comes on. So when you turn it off, basically the capacitor inside of this dash cam is what's keeping the date and time saved uh, correctly and probably a little bit of other things. What we're going to do today is actually go over what this particular dash cam has to offer, what it all comes with, and then we'll show how to, we installed it on our Subaru WRX and then we'll also get some test footage, some sample footage from the from the camera itself. So if you're like me and that's all you probably really wanted to come here for was the sample footage, uh, you can jump to the end of this video and watch that now. This dash cam is pretty small. It is uh, nice that it has some adjustable heights on it so you can actually, once you stick it to your windshield, depending on the steepness of your windshield, you should be able to um, adjust the camera to the right uh, height. So it came with the basic stuff, owner's manual that doesn't tell you a whole lot, the cigarette lighter um, plug-in and a USB to micro USB port so you could plug it into your computer. A couple clips so you could clip the wires up out of the way. Uh, this extended piece if you needed to run the wires um, up further on your windshield. We didn't have to use that. Uh, and then this mounting plate uh, which is kind of the key piece here that we're going to use to mount ours to our car. So the first thing we're going to do is actually just wash our windshield um, inside and out because honestly, when's the last time you did it? You should probably just do it anyways. And then what we're showing here is basically the camera and then the mounting plate. And as you can see here, the mounting plate basically pushes in and then slides up. And then you're going to have to keep that in mind when you mount this. What you're actually going to want to do is keep that mounting plate slid down or in the unlocked position uh, because that way you'll be able to mount it basically as high as you can um, and you'll still be able to remove it easily that way when you want to remove it so we'll go through that here and I decided to stick mine on the passenger side just so it was more out of my way um, behind the rear view mirror so it's kind of hidden you could do the passenger side or the driver side if you prefer so what we're going to do is actually plug in our wire uh, to the camera so we know exactly how far that wire is going to stick out. And again, we're going to leave that mounting clip um, loose in there uh, so it's not pushed up all the way. And then we're going to push it up onto the windshield and stick it on. And there you can see just the mounting plate pushed up in place. So we'll just press that on firmly and make sure it's stuck on real well. And now I unplug the cord from uh, the dash cam and slid it in place. So the next thing I wanted to do was actually just test it out and make sure it was going to work properly. So for this part I didn't use the hardware kit. Uh, so we're going to plug it into our power outlet in our car or cigarette lighter, whichever term you prefer. And here you can see the little screen uh, that the little display will show and you can see the different menu options and here you can just see the adjustable height as I adjust the height from the camera and one thing that seems a little odd about this is when it's recording both red lights are blinking the upper left of the screen there's a circular red dot that's blinking and then also the record light is blinking and then when you stop the recording, the record light is on solid red, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But for the most part, you should be able to plug this in and see that it's going. And if you're worried about whether or not it's actually recording, usually you can just look at the timestamp in the upper right and you'll be able to see that it is uh, counting up and recording the video. And something I want to point out about this 
a camcorder. So as soon as you turn it on, it will start recording, which is great. So you shouldn't have to fiddle with it or anything in your car. Every time you turn it on, it'll start recording. When you turn it off, it will stop. You can set the loop settings. Um, so it'll just loop uh, for one minute, three minutes, or five minutes. I would like to see a longer option there, but five minutes is the longest one I saw. And now we're going back to our install. What I did here is, uh, again, I bought the hardware kit and I ran the wire up above the headliner in the car. It tucked in pretty nicely. And then I moved the plastic piece from the A-pillar. I just had to get it loose a little bit and then I could actually kind of hide it in between uh, the plastic piece and the A-pillar. And then run it all the way down, basically down to the driver's uh, side feet of the car. And then run it through back through the dash to wherever you connect your power source. And all you need to do for this is to connect it to an ignition power source that only comes on when the ignition turns on, and then a ground. So you have to ground it out somewhere. All the cars could be different for that. What I ended up doing for mine was actually just tapping into what I already had for my gauges. I had some other gauges in the car that turned on only when the car came on, and I just spliced into those cables. So, so there it is. You can see it start up. Um, again, it's relatively small, so that's good. And you can unhook it. You can just leave the mounting plate. Here's the view from the outside of the car. You can see the size of it. Final thoughts on this dash cam. It seems to be worth the money. It was under $90 for the dash cam and the hardware kit. And for 1080p, the quality I think is pretty good. Um, I'm really actually impressed with the microphone that's in the camera itself. The microphone seems to record pretty good audio and just so you know you can turn that microphone off as well if you want to. So overall I think it's a pretty good item to have. So now I'm going to leave you with some test footage. I got some day and night footage, windows up, windows down, uh, cloudy, sunny, all that stuff. So thanks for watching and if you have a similar dash cam or if you have issues or questions about it go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching. Yep. Bye.